Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are joining us from across the world. Thank you for participating in the second World Fitness and Wellness Online Summit. My name is Ross Campbell. I have the pleasure of being the founder of Fit Summit. A huge thank you to each and every one of you for joining us alongside 45 incredible speakers. What a day we have in front of us for you to enjoy. None of this is possible without the support of our sponsors and partners. You've just saw some of their names dashed up in front of you, and you'll meet many more across the course of this day. Uh, truly, truly grateful to every single one of them for all of their time, energy, and resource in making this happen. A huge thank you also to my team, my colleagues here at Fit Summit, who have been rock stars in making sure this event is possible. Welcome to Hopin. Have a look around. What do you see? On the left-hand side, this is the main stage. There's a lot of recorded talks here, but also some other discussions and presentations. And you can use the chat box on the right-hand side to let everyone know who you are. So right now, at this very moment, write a little bit about yourself in the general chat box. Who you are, who you're from, where you come from. And that will be a great indicator to make sure people can connect with you directly. On the left-hand side, you'll also see an icon for sessions. After the main stage, we'll break into other live panel discussions with experts from across the world. The networking icon on the left-hand side allows you to network freely with other people. And of course, the exhibition there too. You want some good tips for how to get involved? Let me introduce you to my team just now, and my colleagues will give you a few great ideas to maximize this experience. Hi everyone, I'm Jolene, and I'm the Head of Partnerships at the Fit Summit. My favorite part of the event is for sure networking, because I get to meet different people from different countries, different profiles and companies. So the networking tab is something like a speed dating. You get met with someone new every four minutes. And if you want to take the conversation further after the four minutes, be sure to press connect. When you do that, all the contact information will be sent to each other immediately. So you're able to talk to each other even past these four minutes. So have fun networking and meet as many people as you wish. Hi everyone, my name is Dailin. I am the Head of Marketing and Communications at Fit Summit. My favorite part of the event, that's the expo floor. I get to meet as many exhibitors as I can. I get to find out about their products, what latest technologies they have to help me improve my business. I reach out to them. I click on the register interest button to make sure I stay in touch with them after the event. And some of them have great, amazing offers just happening for this event. So make sure you don't miss it. I'm Blair Campbell. Head of Industry Development at the Fit Summit. What I love most about the Hopin platform is how interactive it is. Here are some of my tips. Firstly, take part in our exciting polls. Answer all the questions and at the end of the event, the data obtained will be available on our on-demand page. Secondly, use the messenger function to send messages to any attendee or request a private video call with them. You can even invite friends to join you, creating a group video call inside the event. Lastly, share your contact details and your live comments in the chat tab during any of the speaker's interviews or sessions to start dialogues with those who are watching and to make new contacts. Thanks. Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and I'm the head of events at the Fit Summit. My favorite part of the event is definitely the sessions. The fact that I get to toggle between sessions and choose the favorite session that I would like to watch at any given time is my favorite part. Also, if I'm in a completely different time zone and I would like to watch a session that I can't watch at a usual time, I can always watch it on demand. The link for the on-demand sessions will be provided to you 48 hours after the event. Enjoy the event. Thank you so much for joining us at the World Fitness and Wellness Summit organized by the Fit Summit. We hope you learned something and also met amazing people. And we're so looking forward to seeing you in person next year. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Blair. 
that hopefully gives you, ladies and gentlemen, a few ideas to make sure this is not only memorable, but fun, exciting, and purposeful across the rest of the day. So why have we created this summit? Well, we've created it because there's a need to connect, because there's a need for us to share ideas from all the bad news around there in the world. There's still a lot of good news that is coming through. There are phenomenal companies, phenomenal people in our industry who are reshaping, reguiding where we are going in the future. And this future is the most exciting one and the most highest potential that we have ever seen. We're about to embark upon a new era of fitness within the health ecosystem, within the wellness and lifestyle ecosystem. I couldn't be any more excited and I couldn't be any more thankful to be here spending this time with each and every one of you. We've got an incredible amount of talks and speakers for you to get to, so I'm not gonna keep you for much longer. This opening session has three incredible keynotes for you to listen to, and we've also got a few surprise guests that have taken time out their day to share some insights with you. Before I introduce the first keynote speaker, let me get a little bit of interaction with the audience and with every single one of you now. I want you to use the chat box and complete the following question or following sentence. 2020 has been blank, blank, blank. Fill in the blanks. Let's see what you say, ladies and gentlemen. Feel free to be humorous. Feel free to be positive. Feel free to be realistic. Anything you want to do, drop it in the box just now. We can have a small smile as you introduce the first speaker. Now, the first speaker is globally renowned, Chuck Runyon, the co-founder and the CEO of Self Esteem Brands, who own a number of brands across the world, none other than Anytime Fitness, who have over 5,000 clubs across the world. Chuck is a leading businessman, a leading uh, entrepreneur, and of course, one of the most seen individuals across this crisis. He has been absolutely amazing at fighting our corner and making sure that fitness and wellness is seen as part of the solution. I'm going to just chuck now and run through a few questions with him. And after that, the rest of the session will follow. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy a great conversation with Chuck Runyon. Chuck, thank you very much for joining us today. What a year it's been so far. Is it possible for you to reflect on 2020 and sum it up in a few words or a few sentences? Oh, yeah. Th Ross, thanks for having me. And if, it's, uh, if I only get a few words, I would say frustrating, sad, re resilient, and proud. Which, which proud may be an interesting word, but, you know, in, in over 30 years of leading teams, I've never been more proud about how a team has responded than our team here at the headquarters supporting, selflessly supporting our franchisees. So, you know, although it's been frustrating and sad, I'm going to take the silver linings out of this. And, you know, frustrating for all the obvious reasons, but, but one that really, really deeply frustrates me is that there's never been a better time to talk about global health preventative health and lifestyle. And still through this entire pandemic, these health experts around the world have had the biggest microphone and the biggest platform to talk about health. And all they're talking about is COVID. All they're talking about is safety. And so I'm just really frustrated that we're not having real conversations about the health of this country, the health of the world to like move us forward. So we are a healthier country and healthier globe, you know, years down the road. So that's what really frustrates me the most. There's lots of lessons, Chuck, that we can take from this as an industry, as a business owner, leader, as a family man or family woman. What are the, some of the lessons that you think are absolutely crucial to our long-term success that we all have to take forward? Yeah, well, I think from a business perspective, I mean, liquidity matters. I mean, you know, cash is king. And I, I think we've seen just how uh, vulnerable small businesses are, not just in the fitness industry, but in every sector. And so, look, I think this is going to have some long-term effects on underwriting standards from lenders, 
the rents we now do with property owners, the commercial insurance industry, and just how we run our business. And obviously everyone knows prior to COVID, we had to be more digital. We had to engage our members outside the club, but it, now it's even more apparent. So I don't think any operator in this industry should go back to what they were pre-COVID. We've got to engage our people outside of our businesses. And we've, we've got to look at our businesses to create a healthy balance sheet. I mean, I think what you're seeing and you know, at the end of the day, those businesses most susceptible to this pandemic have had an unhealthy balance sheet. And so I think whether you are a small or medium sized business, I think there's going to be a keen focus now on keeping your balance sheet healthy to make sure we can manage through turbulent times. Um, and so from a business perspective, I, I think those are important lessons to learn. You know, from a personal uh, perspective, you know, as a leader, right, it's our job to make sure we, of course, take care of ourselves first and we can come to work and we, we are, you know, we lead the way. We've got to be leaned on. And so for me, right, focus and health is, uh, has never been more important. And so I've kind of doubled down on those efforts so I can come to work every day, be my absolute best so I can be a leader for the team. Now, you've got a unique perspective, Chuck. You're operating in every single continent thousands yeah. of properties each at different levels of reopening some have been reopening for a while some are going through their second and third wave looking across the kind of global portfolio i know it's hard to generalize but what trends are you seeing at the moment in time both from a franchise and operator perspective and of course the members coming back through the doors it's a great question and you know it is a patchwork of local policies, I mean, really on every continent. So that's what's made this difficult is, you know, we're working with our franchise owners to do what they need to do in their communities, but it's different, right? And so at the end of the day, execution matters, right? The engagement level you have with your members, you know, making sure you're creating a safe and responsible environment and communicating that to your members, you know, matters. Um, and, you know, geography matters. I mean, we have, we have probably more clubs in small to rural markets around the world than maybe almost any other fitness brand. And because of the size of our clubs and because we can control capacity from everything I see, our usage rates and our revenue is doing better than most of the other industry. And you know, we have fewer membership cancellations, fewer membership freezes. And I also, you know, that's also our franchisees are part of the community. They know their members. So if you add all that up, you know, anytime fitness is doing better than most of the other industry, but look, we are still uh, seeing, you know, more freezes, more cancellations, or some consumer confidence uh, issues. This is very political. And, and really, again, geography matters. If you are in a hot spot in an urban area, that'd be more sensitive than if you're in an outstate area or in a rural part of the world. And so, you know, we, we're just making sure we're helping our owners execute on a local level to inform their members, keep it safe, keep it responsibly, and continue to support our members outside the club. Even though the club is open, let's continue to provide motivation and content and help them be healthier wherever they are. I know across this crisis, we've seen huge amounts of capital and also time and interest being plowed into at-home fitness, connected fitness, virtual and online offerings for fitness and wellness. A lot of these trends might come and go. What are your thoughts in terms of the stickability for some of these trends? Are they here to stay? Or do you think some of these will gradually drop off as facilities reopen? I really subscribe to an abundance mindset. I think this is great for the industry. The more people who engage in healthy activities, the better it is. It's not an either or. It's not like you, you don't just own a piece of fitness equipment or a gym membership. Historically, I think 87% of people who owned a piece of uh, home equipment also had a gym membership. And, you know, Apple just came out with their wearable. And, look, they are going to, you know, shape the personal health of this country, right, with, with where Apple's going out, you know, health kit and uh, the watch. And so, quite frankly, the more people who have wearables, the more they are engaged in their health, the better it is for population health and the better it is for, our, for the fitness industry. So I'm generally supportive of more. And, uh, you know, which ones, you know, I think Apple is going to be a long-term winner. You know, I think Peloton is doing a wonderful job. I think there's going to be plenty of winners. There will be others that fall out of fashion and, you know, they will be replaced. But at the end of the day, you know, what people need is they want progress, they want personalization, they want care. I think the need for accountability and motivation and education is never going to go away. And at the end of the day, what we sell is not access to treadmills anymore. They can, they can get access to content anywhere. What we need to sell is like helping people understand their biometrics or behaviors and coaching them to success. You know, what everyone needs is a little bit of willpower. What everyone needs is like how to, how to shape their life so they can be healthier because we all, we all live unique lives. We have different eating habits. We have different genetics. We have different lifestyles. And so we're working with them to help, you know, mass personalization, to help understand that so they can be healthier. And so for us, it's a little bit more about 
the personalization of coaching and providing that motivation and education and really less about access to a gym. You talked about this kind of almost reflective point, looking back at ourselves as operators and saying, now's the time we should be honest about getting our business up to the next level and meeting consumer demand. How are you innovating internally anytime fitness in terms of tech or experience or product? How are you innovating and what are those innovations going to be impacted both at a franchise level and of course down to your member level? That's a great question. So the short answer is everything we're doing is trying to get closer to the of our members, right? I mean, that's at the end of the day, that's what they join the club for. And so whether it's getting very detailed biometrics, very detailed on their behaviors, and then coaching them to success, everything should, everything in our industry should rally around the health of our members. That should be the metrics we worry about the most, not about how many deals we closed. And so, you know, whether that is bringing the medical industry closer, which we're trying to do, whether that is bringing in technology to, to again, mass personalization, um, you know, everything we're doing is trying to zero in on your individual health, your biometrics, your behaviors, helping you make progress. When people see progress, they don't leave our industry. You know, when they feel cared about, they don't leave our industry. So at the end of the day, if a person drifts away and quits, it, that's on us. Now, sometimes life gets in the way. We get that. But too many people just they're not getting the engagement. They're not seeing the results. They don't, under, they have a very low body intelligence. Like you'd be surprised what people don't know about their body. So if we can educate them on how their body works and then motivate them to see results. We're going to have the, that customer for a long time and they're going to refer friends and family. So at the end of the day, everything we're doing in technology in human training and with our franchisees is to get closer to the health of our members. That's the real metrics that matter the most. We touched on it earlier as well. I mean, it's, it's difficult during this reopening period to really win the hearts and minds of the consumer, but also the hearts and minds of the government, who, as you talked about, have been so reluctant to take advantage of the situation, to really be a broadcaster for the good. How do we influence this? How do we make sure that we improve as an industry and win the hearts of the minds of the consumer faster and the government better in the long term? Ooh. Let, Ross, let me talk about the consumer for a second. Let, sure. First, let me talk about the government because this one drives me crazy. First of all, here's the opportunity. Our industry has been so bad at working together. We have no lobbying presence in government and in, in uh, you know the government here in the U.S. and in countries. And so this is the time when we need to come together as an industry to collaborate, to influence lawmakers around the world, to educate them on the importance of exercise as medicine. And so our our brands around the world need to contribute money contribute time and work together to influence. I mean, the fact that our lawmakers don't think health is essential, think about this. Fast food restaurants are open, liquor stores are open, tattoo parlors are open. All this other stuff is deemed essential, but health isn't. If, if I'm a lawmaker, I should be fighting as hard as I can to, to keep access to health and access to health professionals, right? As a, a health coach who's certified should be essential, just like a, a nurse is right? It's all about preventative health. So industry, this is our time to come together. It's not going to happen without us, right? I mean, at the end of the day, lawmakers are busy. They don't understand our industry. They, they still think about health clubs 40 years ago. It's our job to influence that. As for consumers, I think it's really simple. You know, what's in the best interest of the consumer? Our industry for 30 or 40 years has operated under the premise that you should join our club and our club only. I'm going to sign you up on a contract and you should go, you shouldn't go anywhere else. I got to tell you, man, there are so many wonderful uh, studios out there in gyms. And when a member, when I see a member, I'm like, you should go try that yoga studio. You, you should go try that hit studio. And I hope you still come here too, because variety is going to keep you engaged in your health long term. And like our club, as much as I love our club, it doesn't offer everything that you want or need. Guess what? We'll coach you, but I want you to go try a few other things. Go for that bike ride, right? Go be active. I mean, go, go try a different studio. I shouldn't be threatened by that. So if we're really looking out for the consumer's best interest, they're going to say, wow, I trust this person. I trust this brand. They're actually encouraging me to try other things and not just focus on the club. And so I think, you know, if, if you're really looking out for their best interest, you will win their hearts and minds and ultimately win their loyalty when it comes to a membership because you know, they may go try somewhere else, but they're going to come back to the place that understands them, to come back to the place that cares about them. Couldn't agree more with that statement. Our future is incredibly bright. I know this is a bump in the roads, but working together, there's just so much potential we can un unlock here. I know yeah. this year has been brutal for some parts of the business. We're seeing some consolidation, lots of people being furloughed and, and uh, retrenched. But of course, there is growth ahead. Looking into maybe 2021, Chuck, do you see more growth happening in 2021 or do you think more consolidation is inevitable? How do you see that balance playing out in the next 12 months? 
Well, I think it's a little bit of both. I do think we're going to see market share opportunities, especially from those who've got a, you know, a good uh, liquidity position. Um, you know, I think 70% of this industry used to be of brands that were either in, you know, independent brands or fragmented brands, like very regional small operators. I think we're going to see a change now. I think we're going to see a big spike in, you know, bigger brands now growing in the industry, taking up a larger market share. And so, you know, brands now are sitting on the sidelines looking at, Hey, this is a good time to acquire uh, struggling brands. This is a good time to acquire real estate. You know, in some markets, there was an oversupply issue. Like, especially probably in the studio sector. And so I think long-term, you're going to see a healthier industry, a better run industry, better capitalized industry, which is good for consumers because they're going to have a better experience. And so I do see a wave of consolidation and growth from those players that have the most capital and most resources to take advantage of. Thanks, Chuck. Let's just wrap up. Maybe a quick uh, couple of sentences here. What excites you most about looking into the future of our industry and perhaps maybe a closing thought or two to everyone watching this? Well, I, I, lo I love the fact that we are finally going to accelerate our omni-channel approach, right? I mean, look, at the end of the day, like consumer visits to clubs and studios hasn't changed in 15 years. It really hasn't. D despite the ubiquity of a studio or a club in every corner, members aren't really using it more often. Why? Because they're busy with life. And so now for us to provide assistance for them to live a healthier lifestyle, not just visit the club more, right? To be really more consumer centric and less gym centric. And that may seem odd because I'm in the, the gym space, but to really be consumer centric, I am in, I'm really, really enthusiastic and excited about how we can like meaningfully reach out to our consumers in a way that we've never done before. Like literally be in their pocket. You know, with that, the, 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 the most important, important piece of equipment in the fitness industry is this, right? People pick this up hundreds of times a day. They pick this up more than a fork. They use this more than a treadmill. I mean, this gives us the opportunity to like, this is the most important real estate in the world, right? This gives us the opportunity to really influence change, to like bring health into their everyday life. And so I'm excited for us to do that. I know other savvy operators are thinking the same way. And at the end of the day, I really want healthier people. I just want a healthier country because if we're healthier, we're happier, right? And we're more productive. And I just believe that health is either an asset in your life or it's a liability in your life. And the reality is if you take the world's balance sheet and you look at health as like an asset or liability, it is a liability today. We have an unhealthy balance sheet. And so the only way to fix that, I think the only way for our, all of us as individuals in our countries to reach our full potential is to have a healthier population. So I'm excited about what we can do over the next decade as we get better with data, better with technology, and hopefully we can just now take our empathy take our care and put it in their pocket every single day Chuck, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and i think i speak for everybody in the whole industry to say a huge thanks to you and dave i mean both of you truly in the past few months have been standing on the top of all of our shoulders shouting as much as you can campaigning and lobbying for exercise as medicine so look a huge thanks and a huge gratitude to you dave and the team for all you've done in the last few months uh, thank you, Raj. I pre appreciate that. And uh, thanks for having me today. Hi everyone at Fit Summit. It is wonderful to see you all again. Thank you for continuing to engage and learn and shape the next phase of the best industry in the world. 
My name is Emma Barry and greetings all the way from sunny California where I wear two hats today. First of all, I'm the chief creative soul at our newly launched executive search brand called Good Soul Hunting. We operate out of London, New York and LA, but serve the world by placing C-suite and senior specialists in purpose-led health, fitness and wellness companies that lean into tech. You can find us in three places, goodsoulhunting.com, our website, LinkedIn and Instagram, Good Soul Hunting. Secondly, I'm a global fitness authority, 25 years young in the industry as a founding member of Les Mills International and three years with luxury lifestyle brand Equinox. And I've been consulting to the innovative edge of fitness for the last three years, serving the fastest growing value-based chain in Europe, Basic Fit and the boutique fitness sector. A challenge that I've met during these times personally and professionally is that every weak link has been exposed. And this has been a brutal wake up call to reset our North Star and build back stronger. A lesson I believe we need to take on as we regrow our industry is to be very clear about deciphering what needs to be automated, machine driven and leaning into AI and what needs to double down on the human touch. Remember what we're selling as an industry. We sell hope, a plan, a tribe. We enable people to express themselves physically, mentally, emotionally. We gift mental relief. We recalibrate. We spiritually connect to a better version of ourselves. And that takes people, connection, love and trust, not machines. And what excites me most about our industry uh, recently is that we've collectively been put in an innovation accelerator. And we've really had to streamline, think disruptively, move quicker, try different things and work together with competition and the industry as a whole. Health has taken centre stage and Apple has inextricably linked health to fitness, which is good for us because with that awareness, we can now serve more people. This is our time, but we need to proliferate business models and pricing models and appeal to different niches. It's time to partner. It's time to become more. It's time to step up. I cannot wait to spend time with you in my exclusive boutique clinic and interactive session, which is a Q&A and it's live, where we give you the microphone for questions and we open the kimono on boutique fitness. Have a fantastic summit. I can't wait to see you there. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Next up, we interview Dave Wright. Dave is CEO and founder of MyZone, one of the most successful and prominent fitness technology companies in the world. Dave also happens to be an operator, owning several gyms across the UK and Australia, and also a marketing company which helps fitness companies engage for retention and sales. Dave is a gent and a very honest straight shooter, as you'll see just now. He's very much at the forefront of where technology intersects with health and fitness. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dave Wright. Dave, thank you very much for joining me today. Let's get stuck in. Complete the sentence. 2020 has been. Clusterfuck? Oh, no. <laughs> I probably can't say that, but um, I'd say, uh, look, I think it's been a realignment of the industry. It's, it's the, the, uh, the realignment of our sector, realignment of the benefits of exercise, realignment in regards to the value proposition that we provide to um, to consumers, the realignment of our business strategy and who we serve and who our customers are. Now you wear several hats, Dave. Uh, let's kick off with the operator hat on first. I know this market has been brutally difficult for operators, but has it dampened your enthusiasm to invest more in bricks and mortars in the future? Um, I don't think so. Right now, immediately, I think I think it would be um, prudent to sort of like 
see how the retail, the uh, rental space is available out there. I, I think I'm, I'm not too sure if I'd feel so confident launching straight into a brand new lease tomorrow um, when we don't know where the dust will settle and when it will settle. Um, so I think um, in the future, bricks and mortar are at the core of the health and fitness industry. They're at the core of um, the community. They're at the core of connectedness. And they and hey, look, we not many people have um, commercial grade treadmills or lap pull downs or the likes of kettlebells in their garage. Um, and the financial investment in regards to what you get for your money with commercial health clubs uh, is still outweigh the uh, the what you what a person has the ability to buy themselves even though the home market has gone through the roof i think um with with people wanting you know that have had to buy equipment for home i think they do realize that that sense of community but i wouldn't be launching right here into a bricks and mortar now because we're going to have to see where the high street ends up i, I think it, we, it's not just our sector that that is being smashed by um, this this pandemic. I, I, all retail has, which means there's a lot of landlords out there that I think are going to be looking at their tenancies and going, okay, we we're going to need a, to be a little bit more lenient um, to uh, to open up spaces for for potential um, customers. Like you say, the dust will settle, whether it settles this year or early next, but the landscape will change what lessons again with your operator hat on what lessons must operators take forward out of this crisis i, I think the the big thing that we all look at through this this um sort of like realignment um of the industry or, or any businesses um is you've got to look at your rent um what were, were you a sustainable business beforehand we've got to look at your connection with your customers I think that sits at the core of what we what we offer. You know, we're, I've been saying for a long time about you know, ha, do you have a real connection and communication with your uh, with your customers? Um, for, for even for many years, and I've said it on many webinars, is um, it, typically if your new members stop today, how would you treat an existing member? How would you how would you look after them? W would you really go that little bit extra to make sure that they felt connected, they felt part of something, they got results that they, were, they signed up and paid for? Would you reach out to those people that were the sleeping dogs to try and get them back in? Um, or would you sort of like go quiet? And, and I think, you know, when we look at the sleeping dogs and we look at the whole industry as a sleeping dog at the moment, um, I know it's started to bounce back, but I think it really made us um, look as an industry at, at what type of, what value proposition that we provide for our customers and what connection do we really have? Or are we just purely renting equipment? Are we just effectively, there's the key, do it yourself and then see you later. Um, so I think that's a big thing, looking at the rent and looking at the connection and the people, because we are a people environment. Now we're going through this for the first time. People are inevitably going to make mistakes, Steve. Can you reflect back on perhaps a mistake that you've made in the past few months? And again, maybe perhaps a lesson you're taking forward from that? Uh, look, uh, I, you know, sadly, I, I had to liquidate one of my, um, my gyms, one of my very first gyms. Um, and, you know, I, I've had that for about 15, 16 years. Uh, and that was a tough decision. Now, I had signed originally a lease that was paying a little bit too much than of rent than I should have been paying, um, and then once you get into that whole um, that whole business model, you know we weren't making fifty percent EBITDA. Um, not many businesses in the health and fitness industry were make, can make that amount of money in regards to service in the health club. So so we didn't necessarily have that fat to be able to accommodate a, a significant drop in revenue. And I also had a landlord who demanded that I pay rent the full time during COVID. And, and I, I, we just couldn't do it. I just could not see, you could get loans, you could get, um, you know, grants, but, you know, uh, with particularly in our, our sector, um, 
it, it is effectively a death by a thousand cuts. And sadly, I had to liquidate the company. Um, it, it meant that I, I was fortunate enough to be able to relocate um, all my members to another gym in town, a, a great, and a client of ours anyway, a great um, uh, gym in town, and also help with some of the staff. Um, and uh, fortunately, I've got the most fabulous gym at home now um, with some of the equipment. But um, but apart from that, it, it's it's tough. It, it, it was a tough decision, um, but you know that was one of the big decisions. And I but I knew that it was coming, and um, I knew that that um, you know it was it was going to be a massive fight back because the rent was unsustainable. Um, what we had uh, you know built up to over the last fifteen years. Really appreciate that that honest share, Dave. Let's maybe look in the next few months. We've saw gyms reopen. Of course, we're getting hit by a second, a third wave. Inevitably, we're going to come up against more obstacles in this road to recovery. What do you think in terms of what other obstacles are coming up? I mean, you touched on one being landlords and rent. That's obviously an obstacle to growth. But where else are you seeing obstacles to growth? Well, look... um... You mentioned you mentioned the second wave, um, which is what we've had with my gyms in Victoria, in Australia. Um, we we were closed um, early on in the in the COVID. We relaunched on the 23rd of June after a massive social media fight and and building that awareness through the Voyage Fitness gyms, um, doing a lot of crazy stuff on Instagram and Facebook and 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 trying to keep that excitement there. Um, and then when Dan Andrews, the Premier of uh, of Victoria, closed the uh, the the gyms again for six weeks, um, and now. It's, it's actually closed again until December. Um, it, it's very, it, it's a kick in the nuts, shall we say. And, 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 you know, to sit there and go, we are opening when brothels are opening. You know, it, it's just a, it, it's just bonkers. It's absolutely bonkers. But it, it's also hard um, to keep the staff motivated and keep the managers motivated when, when you know, you take that first punch you get up and you go right. We're gonna we're gonna charge through it, and we were looking great. We we were absolutely, you know, as I'm sure most gyms were. You know, we we were fighting. You know, it was like a brand new January, your New Year resolution. Everyone was coming in to join again, and and we were starting. You know, we're doing all the the COVID social distancing and all this throughout the facility, but then having to be forced to be shut again. Um, it, it, it's it's tough. So I think I think that's the that's the big thing that that um, I think operators will have to. Face is is being able to look at your business model, look at your operational efficiency to make sure that you are efficient in how you operate, um, and and but also bearing in mind that you've you've got so much cleaning that you have to do as well. Let's pivot a little bit towards technology, Dave. We have saw this huge acceleration in technology across the consumer market, across the fitness and wellness industry. Let's take a macro uh, viewpoint first and then we'll drill down. What are some of the macro trends that you think you've saw in the past nine months of 2020? Look, the big macro trend is is, um, this whole virtual streaming. Um, I think Peloton had, had... Set the wave of that. Their shares have gone through the uh, the, the roof, um, and I think everyone else was looking at that, going, "This is this is what we need." You know, there is an appetite for for people to be online and connected from where they are, meeting members or potential exercises where they are, um, and you know, those people that are still forced to stay at home um, and still forced to or highly encouraged. To, uh, to to work from home and stay at home has um, has has meant that you know people industries from a macro letter you, we, everyone is trying to reach out to stay connected zoom um, teams all these type of programs to to stay connected so the, the, the big macro trends with that is how can we deliver exercise not just on an individual basis but from a group environment um, and so we've, you know, of course, we've seen what Amazon have done. We've seen just recently what Apple have done. Are we surprised with that? Absolutely not. There is, there is nothing to, to be surprised with um, Apple trying to come after our health, the health and fitness industry. You know, they've, they've been grumbling on in the background, trying to do their own form of aggregator 
from booking because they saw how much money was thrown into the aggregators of the industry, uh, you know, the class passes of the world. So you knew Apple was sniffing around all the edges trying to get their fangs into all the CRM providers. Then they've seen Peloton and now they've tried to, to go out there and, and launch in their, their own form of, uh, of Peloton and the likes. But on the flip side, and Jay Blanick, who is from our industry, all those that are uh, old enough to, to know, he, he literally started one of us as a, an aerobics instructor and doing the circuits, and he did his videos 20 years ago. Um, but the, the one thing about that is it's raising the awareness of exercise. It, it's raising the benefits of exercise and, you know, all tides – Tides lifts all boats, and and that's the one thing that we as an industry, you know, have to bear in mind is is that the more people talking about exercise, the more you know, this is great doing, and and fair play to you, Ross and the Blair and the team for what you've done in regards to the 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 virtual um, education. But you and I know there's nothing better than a, a, a eyeball to eyeball, face to face. You know, sometimes at the bar, sometimes at the in conferences, and that's where we're all, you know, um, designing to, you know, desiring to get back to. And it's the same in the health and fitness industry. So if we've got more, if there's more appetite of people going, um, okay, we we love the concept of um, of the benefits of exercise and all this, but we still need that connectedness. And and if it if it if it gets that that bottom eighty percent to do to feel a bit more comfortable and confident and, hey, I can do that type of exercise. Well, guess what? I'm now ready to go in and, uh, and join a club and, and, and be a part of somewhere, someone else. Let's look at the wearables market because it has exploded in the past few years. And it's also unlocking a lot of these new demographics, Dave. Who do you think are going to be new players in this sector in the next couple of years? We saw the acquisition of Fitbit by Google, although it's obviously still to get clearance, I believe, from SEC. You touched on Apple. How will the characteristics and dynamics of this market change in the next couple of years? I think the, it's all going to be about the data and, and, and what they're going to use with that data. I, I, I've said for many years on the circuits, I mean, particularly since I launched, you know, my zone is, is, you know, if, if the data is not accurate, it's not relevant, you know, it, it, to, and, and so therefore a lot of the, um, the macro companies trying to parachute into the health and fitness sector, we're, we're talking about tech companies trying to, to parachute into our sector. So they don't necessarily understand that whole psychology um, of accuracy and um, the, the, the importance of um, doing the exercise right. You know, in, in the training education world, an activity done, an exercise done 90% correct is 100% wrong. You might be doing the lap pull down. Oh, I'm, I'm doing it 90%. So that, that's fine. But, it, but it's actually, you could be damaging your neck. You could be damaging, you know, um, your vertebrae. And, and, and so therefore, you, 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 people don't get that. Um, however, what, as I said before, you know, the, 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 the industry's changed and, and we as a society has changed that we want the information now we want the information now we want it in front of us right here right now um and we don't want to delay and so you know i think the 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 tech um combined with a good trainer to interpret the tech to determine what is um well what is right that's where the the rubber hits the road um and i think that's where good operators using tech um not as a be all and end all but as an accelerator to them providing a fantastic service because there are some things that we that we don't need. I mean, this, this whole, I mean, obviously you've, many of your viewers have probably seen this new Netflix movie called The Social Dilemma, where it, where it absolutely, you know, bashes the whole, um, the, the, the data and the manipulation of, manipulation of the data of, you know, influencing elections and, and, and the likes. Um, I, I think, you know, that, that, is a, that is a concern, um, but you've got to make sure that whatever that data is, it's relevant and it's important to you and your, your members. Now, you've not been quiet for the past few months 
my zone of being busy innovating yourself. Two years, you mean? Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, talk, talk, talk about, um, share some innovations you've done this year, Dave, because they've been incredible at what you guys have actually achieved in just a short space of time. Hey, look, look, Ross, we, what, what we, uh, whether the word pivot is not the right word because cause we've, I don't believe as an organisation we've ever pivoted um, in, and that, that sounds a bit rough, but, but and when I say in regards to our strategy, our strategy has always been about helping operators stay connected with their customers, whether they're within or outside the four walls of their facility. So we've not changed. There's a lot of other suppliers of the industry who have tried to come in and tried to do a little bit of this and have tried to do a little bit. We've, we've stayed true to our value proposition is, is we're effectively, um, you know, democratizing fitness through the benefits of exercise and, and focusing on effort rather than fitness, um, but also creating that community. Uh, and, and with my other hat, which is, a, you know, a, a company that's, provides, um, you know, consultancy and marketing servicing for the fitness industry for 30 years, 1990, um, you know, we've, we've gone out there to encourage people to exercise and join gym. So we've, we've had sort of like a, a strong platform of hearing why people want to join the gyms and why people don't want to. Um, and so that whole sense of, of community, that whole sense of connection. So we launched um, what, what we've called MZ Remote. So obviously when you go into an existing gym and you've got um, everyone who's got their own belt on and they can see their effort on their screen, not, not performance in regards to, hey, I'm better than anyone else, but I'm trying just as well as everyone else. And that's the, um, that's sort of like what we did a little bit different. So it was not a pissing contest. It was effectively um, democratized. You could be an elite athlete. You could be someone in a wheelchair, but you could be participating on your own effort level. Um, and so that, that there, that, that gamification of um, effort level in, in exercise made the thing, uh, made a difference, but, but also the telemetry display on the screen. Now, when clubs closed and people were able to stay connected with their members through the, the MyZone app and the coaching capability that we had, you know, we had this large demand of going, ah, oh, we've got all these members training at home, but they want to stay connected with their members. And so, so a lot of them would be doing Zoom calls and um, then the instructor would be saying, hey, show me your MyZone tile. So they'd have to show their, their, their phone up on the screen in between the breaks. So we, what we did is we were able to um, open the actual, the, the portal up so that even if people were training at home, all their tiles would appear in a web browser, no matter where they were, so that they could, so that both the coach and the participant could still feel part of a community. Um, and it was something that we included with our offering. We didn't charge extra for it or anything like this. It was our whole objective um, was to support the operators because it was a lot of people say, you know, oh, that you've done the Peloton. It's like, no, no, we've done a Peloton for operators to provide their own Peloton to their members. Um, so, and, and since, you know, there, there's been a lot of um, reopenings, a lot of operators, a lot of operators have, um, have gone with the hybrid approach. So they've still got members in their gym on their screen with their MyZone tiles up, but they've split the screen where half of the screen have got, 50 or 20 or 30 or 40 people from home who are still participating. And because we've done the integration with Zoom, they're able to see the instructor who is teaching to the people in the club, but they're also teaching to the people that mightn't have been able to book into a spot or don't feel comfortable going into the gyms. And that, that has been, um, you know, widely well received by um, our 8,000 various gyms in 84 countries. Let's wrap it up, Dave. I know you've had 30 years in this industry now. Um, what advice would you give to I anyone? I was two when I started. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you've mentored companies, you've grown companies, but looking at it from somebody coming new into the sector, either for the first time or perhaps even looking to grow a business, what would be your advice to them just now? I would say learn. Uh, knowledge is key. Um, you know, don't expect to do a, a weekend course um, and, and you think that you've, you've actually got it nailed. Um, I, I think really plan out the, the value proposition that you bring. Do a lot of research. Measure, you know, the old carpenter's rule, measure twice, cut once. Um, people coming into this industry, look at what value you bring. 
Um, and I think right now, it, it, there was, and, and Ross, I'm sure you, you're, you're aware of this, there was a, a time, I know when I was growing up, is that if you wanted to earn more money, you added more value. Then it seemed to twist where all, a lot of these young kids are coming out going, huh, if you want me to add more value, you're going to pay me more money first. Right, where I think that we've we've had a realignment of that, where the 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 operators, businesses are looking back, going, okay, what value do you bring to our organisation? So those all those those you know middle managers, those managers, those staff who who were were sort of like going, I'll do just enough. You know, they're the ones that are actually sadly out there looking for jobs right now. Because when it comes from an employer perspective, you know, it, it's a matter of what you've got to look and say, okay, what value do you bring to me as an organization? Um, and because right here, right now, uh, you know, the, the, the world is, is we've, got, we've all got to make tough decisions. We've got to make tough decisions. It's, we've got to look at, at, at who adds value to our business. Um, so I think any people starting out there, whether they're, you know, don't expect to, to fast track it, learn and, and ask questions and ask and meet different people and take your blinkers off. Uh, if you want to build a biz your, your, your business by 10%, then you follow the best in your industry. But if you want to improve your business by 110%, you follow the best in another industry, the other, you know, a, a much more professional industry than ours. You know, we're, we're still only 45, 50 years young, our industry. It's, it's bonkers when you think of that. We, we are still at the infancy. Um, but right here, right now, we've got the opportunity. We've got to be focusing on professionalism. We've got to be focusing on not just about trying to make a quick buck, about really proving how we can help our customers get the results that they're after, and that makes a huge difference. And if, 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 we, if we begin with the end in mind of how we can help change and turn the tide on physical inactivity, that's where it is. There's too many kids out there now that think that they can, oh, okay, I'll just do a YouTube channel, and then I'm going to be a superstar. There's a lot of trainers out there that have looked at this gone, hang on a minute, this virtual coaching thing's ace. I'm going to, uh, this is where I'm going to make my business. Once, once we get back to normality, it, it's going to be an industry world, but you've got to look at where you add value. Couldn't agree more, Dave. I really, really enjoyed that conversation as always. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for those that don't know Dave and don't know my zone, please do look them up and connect with them directly here. It's been an absolute pleasure. Dave, as always, a huge thanks for your continued support. Look forward to seeing you and the team very soon. Hey, congratulations to you and Rod, in, in the last two or three years, what you guys have done to, uh, to bring so many speakers and audience and to, together in, is just been fabulous. So, uh, so congratulations to you. It's a pleasure being here and also amongst so many other just phenomenal speakers. And, and uh, I know when, 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 this, uh, when we're going live on this, I'm going to be uh, literally spending the whole day, you know, watching so many other, not me, rock star speakers. So uh, thank you very much for making this all happen. Pleasure, pal. Thank you very much, Dave. This is the moment you've waited for. Hi everybody, this is Simon Flint, CEO of Evolution Wellness. Evolution Wellness operates a portfolio of six brands across Southeast Asia, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Thailand. And those brands include Chi Fitness, Celebrity Fitness, Fire Fitness, Fitness First, 
GoFit and our wellness brand, Five Elements. We also have a software company with a product called Circuit. When I reflect on 2020 and the challenges we've had to overcome, there of course are many, but two key themes spring to mind. One has been cost and cash management, and the second has been communications. It's been imperative to manage cash in order to survive as a business, to come through this phase to a point where we can bounce back and hopefully thrive once again. And I know we're not unique in that sense. And secondly, through all of this change from having six markets in complete closure through to some coming back online, going back off again and back into lockdown, communications management has been absolutely imperative across our 7,000 staff, our 170 sites and hundreds of thousands of members that belong in those clubs and outlets. Instilling confidence in our standard operating procedures and the training of our staff so that our members feel confident, as confident in our gyms as they would anywhere else. That's been absolutely critical and it continues to be really important now as getting people back to exercise, back into healthy habits, back to achieving the goals that they set about in the first place is a challenge that is going to continue for many months to come. So great communications instilling confidence in the marketplace is what we all need. And to have the genuine backup of excellent standard operating procedures in place each and every day with 100% compliance. When I think about growth and what the opportunities are, three things come to mind there. One, back on that cost theme, is that many businesses, certainly including ours, have to operate with leaner cost in many ways. Because we're not necessarily going to return to the higher revenues anytime soon, we need to preserve our cash, we need to operate prudently and manage our costs in a way that allow us to grow ourselves out of this situation. And that leads me to think about technology. What are the technological applications that can help us be more efficient? They may be front-facing, they may be back of the house in helping us to become more efficient and manage costs. I think embracing technology is going to be key. For us, pivoting into the more into the digital arena and to connected fitness is going to be important. But not every business necessarily needs to do that. Not every business can. But when I think about our industry and what it has to offer, some people say, what business are we in? Are we in fitness, wellness, service, hospitality? Some say we're in the happiness business. Well, maybe we're in all of those, but one thing we can certainly think about now is the importance of the human connection, hospitality and service, making the extra phone call, having the extra conversation with our members to see if they're doing all right and to see if there's anything else we can do. For those of us who do operate with bricks and mortar outlets, that opportunity is there each and every day to do that little bit extra, to reinforce the value of human connection and community at a time like this. I'm optimistic in many ways, despite what COVID-19 has brought upon the industry, because the backdrop to our industry tells a very poignant story. It tells us that we are more important and more relevant than ever. Increased incidence of diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and the consequences of sedentary lifestyle. This shines an opportunity, it shines a light on the opportunity that we all have. So with that backdrop, our industry has to be more relevant than ever. And it needs each of us to knuckle down, manage those messages and instill confidence in the marketplace that being with us is the right thing to do and the right place to be for physical well-being, for mental well-being. And on that note, I'd like to say thank you to Ross and the team for setting up another great summit, bringing like-minded people together to solve problems together. They do a great job. And to everybody today, have a great summit. I hope you get a lot out of it and best wishes to everybody. Hi, my name is Jennifer Manvey and I'm the founder and CEO of Physique 57. Physique 57 is a global fitness brand with studios in New York City, as well as Dubai, Thailand, the Philippines, and India. We also have a handful of studios opening up in the US through our franchising model in 2021. Our mission is to provide motivation and inspiration to help our clients achieve unshakable strength. Our studios in New York and in many locations have been closed since March. And so we are providing this mission 
and enhancing our purpose around the world through our video on demand program, which we've had actually since 2012. And we have seen that grow tremendously. We have over 300 videos in our library. We're adding content all the time. And that I think has helped us reinvent and rethink our business as we focus more on the digital platform and the virtual classes that we offer with also to a global client base. It has been a very challenging year for all of us. I think there's a tremendous opportunity for us to rethink and reimagine our businesses. Potentially competition will decrease, margins can increase, and we can increase revenue, not just from our studios, but by adding on substantial revenue from our digital products. So I think the world is our oyster. We have a lot of success coming our way if we think about business differently, and if we think globally, and we think digitally, and we also provide a safe and welcoming environment in our studios. It is great to meet you all. I wish you all tremendous success and I hope to meet you someday soon. Last, but certainly not least, our final keynote speaker for this opening morning session. I had the absolute pleasure of talking to Nerio Alessandri, founder and president of Technogyms. Technogym need no introduction. They are one of the most prominent technology companies in the world, and their equipment and products are seen across thousands upon thousands of gym floors, studio floors, hotel floors, condominiums, medical, healthcare, and military facilities. They are an incredible brand. He is an incredible thought leader, having been in the industry for 40 years. This uh, interview has to be translated. Uh, Nerio spoke in Italian, but we have captions for you to listen to, and it really is a fantastic interview. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome the one, the only, Nerio Alessandri. Ciao Nerio, thank you very much for joining us today. Looking forward to a great conversation as are all who are listening both now and of course on demand afterwards. You're fast approaching your 40th year anniversary with Technogym. Taking a walk back in time to 1983 when you first started the company, when you first started this journey, did you envision what you were going to build today? Thank you, everybody, and hello, everybody. I started with a dream, the dream of putting the world in motion again. When I was in my small garage, I wanted to become an entrepreneur to help the world being better. I have always believed in unthinkable challenges, and I have always believed in innovation. Today, after almost 40 years, every day for me is like the first day. 2020 has given everybody a lot of time to reflect, Nelio, reflect on who they are, why we're here, what their future lies. Where does the future of Technogym lie and what reflections have you had in 2020 that you're going to take forward? Every crisis also represents a great opportunity. At the moment, the global emergency we are going through is about to create for our industry a great opportunity. The opportunity to surf the health trend. Health has never been so important and so relevant for people. It's at the top of all of our priority lists. So we, as an industry, we can help tackling diseases and to strengthen immune defences. What we need to do is to change our business model. Today, it's not any more about fitness club only. It's not any more about fitness club or home fitness. Today, we need to talk about fitness club plus home fitness. We need to think about a hybrid situation. In this perspective, our wellness on the go, personalized wellness anywhere and any time, it's key. It's important not only to provide service to members within the club, but also at home. Home fitness in addition to fitness club. This is a new potential market for fitness operators. But in order to take advantage of this opportunity, digital is fundamental. 
Digital transformation is needed to catch this opportunity of providing people a training experience anytime and anywhere. Ecosystem is a solution, and Technogym has always believed in an Apple-like strategy that combines smart equipment, service, content and software. With all these elements together, today you can turn a big problem, the crisis, into a big opportunity. Fitness clubs can become wellness hubs and transform their models in order to connect to their members and offer them programs and services both inside and outside the facility. Now, Technogym Nerio work across pretty much every vertical possible – fitness, wellness, hospitality, commercial, residential. Picking out some of the trends that you're seeing across the year, what trends are impacting some of these verticals? Quality, both in terms of product and service, for us, it is always at the centre, and it's even more important than before. I see in all this different market segment a transformation. On one side, a digital transformation, but also a transformation in terms of design, in order to create emotions and to offer people engaging experiences and personalised solutions. This means that the hybrid market that we are facing more and more requires an offer based on variety. Now, Technogym have technology as part of your DNA, but having met so many of your team over such a long space of time, culture is absolutely part of your DNA. When you look at culture from a leadership perspective, has it been a daily investment or is this something you've just let naturally, organically mature? Innovation is culture. Innovation is continuous change. At Technogym, we have a motto that says, if it works, if it's successful, it means that it is obsolete. This means change, continue to change after every success. Innovation is a state of mind that you need to share with the team and create a cross-fertilization that brings change. You don't have to be afraid, you need to be prepared to risk and you need to invest. We have precise examples of innovation. Technogym has always innovated. We have to date 300 patents. We were the first in the industry to introduce, 35 years ago, heart rate control. Then we integrated the first TV on fitness equipment. Then we launched the first Internet of Things, My Wellness Cloud, the first cloud platform in our industry. So we have created an ecosystem. Technogym is Apple-like, and this can happen only thanks to company culture. You continue to pioneer the potential of technology across fitness and wellness scenario. In 2020, you've been very busy behind the scenes throughout this crisis in innovating further. Can you update us all on what's new with your platforms and products in 2020 and where they fit within the techno gym ecosystem? In order to create an experience both online and offline, we have introduced the techno gym live open platform that adds to our ecosystem. Today, operators, thanks to My Wellness App 5.0, can offer their training experiences to their members both inside the facility and at home. This way, members can live their club training experience online and offline, both on-site and online. Technogym Live allows to have on the fitness equipment console different training options, one-to-one -one sessions, athletic training routines, virtual training, entertainment options, music, movies. Technogym is Apple-like, and Technogym Live is like the Apple Store. We have created within our ecosystem our Apple Store that features both Technogym contents and contents produced by operators. So, clubs can offer their training experience both inside the facility and to members at home or even outdoors. Nerio, thanks for all that insight. Very much appreciated. Let's close this looking ahead, looking optimistically ahead, looking positively ahead. What closing thoughts do you have that you can share with the rest of the industry today? I would like to tell our friends and partners that we have to look to the long term. Wellness, fitness and sport are the coolest sectors you can find at the moment. We are perfectly in line with the strong trend of sustainability. Healthy people, healthy planet. 
What we need to do is to evolve our business model in order to be able to surf the digital transformation. We at Technogym want to be partner of our friends and customers, the operators. We are living in the sharing economy era, in the fourth industrial revolution, the era of partnership. That's why we want to make strategic partnerships with operators. Nobody can win alone. In today's scenario, partnership is key. We need to look at the long term. This is the best moment to invest. Technogym at the moment is investing more than in the past, because times of crisis are the times in which you can build your future. I'm sure I'm very convinced that we will overcome this difficult time and we will be even stronger than before. Nerio, I think that is an inspirational way to end this interview. I want to thank you for your huge support of Fit Summit. Techno Gym really have been behind this virtual crusade of ours, this digital transformation from the very start. And without you, we simply wouldn't be here. Nerio, a huge thanks to you and your team. And thank you for your thoughts today. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for your attention. I love you. I love Techno Gym. I love the wellness industry. And together, we have a huge opportunity. Let's move for a better world. Play it again, Larry. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Fit Summit. My name is Sean Tan, and I'm a director in the True Group. We're a big box operator in Asia, and we operate gyms and studios under the brands True Fitness, TFX, and Yoga Edition. We have 10 clubs in Singapore, and we operate another 14 in Taiwan. What is a lesson or reflection that we will now have to consider to regrow our industry? Well, I'd like to put forward three points. The first, the higher levels of cleanliness and hygiene are here to stay. The sweaty, you know, and bad smelling gyms of yesteryear are gone. Members have now become accustomed to these higher levels of cleanliness and hygiene, and these are here to stay. Second point, embrace technology. Think for a moment, what would have happened if COVID-19 had struck before we had high-speed internet and digital connectivity? Our industry, as well as many others, would have been totally decimated. We wouldn't be around. And through this crisis, fortunately, we've had internet connectivity and we've learned um, how to do things with the help of technology. Technology, as many of them always say, is an enabler. And we have to learn how to harness that technology to the best advantage for us. Don't be a slave to technology. You know, there has been many a debate as to whether or not the digital um, fitness, uh, that whole industry is going to take over from the physical. I do not think so. Um, there's also been some discussion as to the type of um, industry we will become, whether it's going to be a hybrid model. Yes, I do believe that we will have a hybrid model on our hands, and that's the way to go of the future. However, the hybrid in my mind is not a 55-50 hybrid where it's 50% physical and 50% digital and online. No, for the time being and in the near future, um, the preference for members is still 
for the physical workouts in our physical gyms. It's brick and mortar still. So the hybrid might be somewhat slanted to an 80-20, 80 in favor of um, the physical and 20 to digi digital. But nevertheless, technology is here to, 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 to stay. So let us you know, understand it and embrace it. And the third and final point, let's continue to do what we do best in providing members with places where they can work out safely and delivering a very high standard of education and training for them. Members have spoken. The moment our gyms have reopened, there has been a flood of members wanting to come through the doors and to go, go back to the workouts that they are familiar with. They want to go back to their routines. We need to still be there and to provide them for what they want. We're here, we're in the service industry, we need to be there for our members. I think I've said more than enough. I'm not even slated as a speaker or a panelist today. It is fantastic to see all of you online today. Welcome again to the Fit Summit. Congratulations, Ross, and to the amazing team at the Fit Summit for putting together yet another fantastic event. These online events have been great and thank you for giving us the occasion to get together um, you know, with friends from the industry and like-minded people you know, every few months or so. But I do look forward to the time very soon that we can all get together, have a chat in person and clink some glasses. Cheers, enjoy the rest of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the opening session. How do you think? What do you think we like the best? Uh, do let me know in the comments box right now, which one of these incredible speakers do you think hit a home run? Personally, I think we all did. But of course, there's some great takeaways. If there's a takeaway that you thought from any one of those, please again, write it in the chat box just now. Please take note of my colleagues' recommendations. Drop your LinkedIn URL in the chat box now so that people can make sure that they connect with you. We're going to take a small break in the main stage for the next few minutes. We've then got two short guest addresses from One Fit Stop and from the NASM. And after that, we're going to break again into other global keynote CEOs. But for now, please go into the exhibition hall, walk around there, take note of all the innovation that is happening across the marketplace just now. Click the register interest button so you can connect directly with all of the guys and girls that are here today. They truly do some inspirational work. And if you want to answer questions, you can ask them all directly. If you think you want to join networking, you can. Click the networking icon. Get your webcam ready. Make sure your microphone is enabled. And then you can jump straight in to meeting people one-on-one. -on -one. You have four minutes of random speed networking. Every time you network, click the connect button and you'll get the details shared afterwards. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your comments. Thanks for your energy. Grab a cup of tea, get a stretch, and we'll see you back in just a few minutes time. Uh -huh.